Tell me, what was that first dream like? I was standing there in the woods, under a blood red sky, surrounded by these black dead trees. Ashes were falling like snow, and I could smell something burning. It was like the aftermath of a nuclear war. I heard something approaching in the distance, so I panicked. I went to grab these hatchets on the ground, and that's when I noticed the blood all over my hands. And how did you feel when you saw the blood? I felt... afraid, Dr. Wilson, but... But what, Toby? A part of me also felt relieved. Until I saw the figure in the woods. The figure? Yes. I saw a silhouette up on the hill. And I was frozen for a moment. And did you recognize this figure? No. Hmm. What happened then? I saw limbs stretching out from behind him. Black serpent-like limbs. They began moving quickly down the hill, spreading in all directions. I wanted to run, but I couldn't move. It was speaking to me. Through the chaos and all the noise, a voice was calling out to me. I couldn't even make out what was being said. It just... it was... deafening. Make it stop. Make it stop. Make it stop. Make it stop. Toby, you're gonna be late for school. I'll be down in a minute. Okay, honey. I made breakfast if you're hungry. Mom always liked to pretend that everything was okay. She would always put on that fake smile and act like she gave a fuck. The night before, dear old dad was kicking me in the ribs on the kitchen floor. But that morning, nothing. Nothing but smiles and sunshine. As if she wasn't married to a monster. In other news, police still have no suspects in the brutal murder of the two brothers in Roscommon. You may recall the story we broke Wednesday about the brothers who were found dead near their home with what seemed to be missing kids. Millie, did you get enough to eat? Yeah, Mom. I think she's had more than enough. Looks like she needs to cut back a bit on the food intake. Fuck you. Hey! Watch your fucking mouth! Frank? You... Shouldn't talk to her like that. It's rude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, if it makes you feel better, she ain't alone. You were never this big before. Hey, son. Did you want some French toast? I'll get lunch at school. Are you sure? For fuck's sake, Evelyn. If the boy's too scared to have breakfast with his father, then just let him go. You're not my father. And I'm not scared of you. That right. Maybe I didn't kick you hard enough last night, hmm? Stop it, you two! Shut up, bitch! Why don't you shut up for once? You gonna make me? Hmm? What's it gonna be, boy? <gasps> you piece of shit! Get the fuck back here! Hey! Stop the boss! God damn it! Evelyn! I knew from the reports I've read that your stepfather was indeed a monster. You suffered a great deal at his hands. I know. I couldn't feel it anyways. I could have just lived with it. I- Toby, no one should have to live like that. And even if you didn't feel it physically, it clearly had a major psychological impact. 
While this question may be on the record, I am genuinely curious to know the reason you remain silent about your parents' tendencies in your early life. Surely there was a point when you wanted to run away from home. I actually did one time, but I realized that Millie would have to fend for herself against Frank. And if I reported the violence to a counselor or the authorities, there's a chance she and I would have been separated and sent to different foster homes. I see. You and your older sister were very close, weren't you? Yeah. We'll get deeper into your home life in a moment, Toby. But first I want you to take me through your experience in school. What was that like for you? I guess school was the same for me as it is for most kids. Was there bullying? I think everyone gets bullied, but things didn't get bad until, well, until after. I see. Walk me through the average day of school before everything happened. There's not really much to talk about. I would come to school, go to class, have lunch, and go home. I always kept to myself until JC started in on me. JC? Yeah, this bald kid, Jason Camblin. He would constantly mock and humiliate me. Just words, but it can be a lot to deal with, especially when life at home is even worse. You never get a break, you know? I wasn't the only one he bullied, but him and I used to be friends, so it was more personal. And despite the obnoxious group of friends that always followed him around, Millie would usually step up in my defense before anything got out of hand. She protected me at school. And I protected her at home. In front of the building, there was a big rock near the flagpole. I would sit there and wait for my mom to pick me up from school, but... That day she was running late, and I knew something was wrong. Well, look who it is. The bastard son himself. Shut up, Jason. Do you ever wonder where daddy is, Toby? <laughs> like, maybe he's drunk in a gutter somewhere. <laughs> you think? I'm not in the mood for this. Yeah, you don't have time for your old friends anymore, huh? You were never really my friend. See, that's where you're wrong. But it certainly didn't take you long to find a replacement, did it? Where is Danny anyways, hmm? Not much of a friend to let you sit here all alone. Toby Adams, Principal Webb would like a word with you. Come with me. I'll let Danny know you're gonna be late. Go fuck yourself. Have a seat, Toby. Am I in trouble? Oh, well, that depends. You know what this is, don't you? It's a letter opener. Ha! The faculty's gonna get a load of this. You answered something correctly for once in your life. I'm told you're very familiar with this particular object. And I don't like what I'm hearing about you, Mr. Adams. I've had multiple students, as well as faculty members, complain about you digging this into your skin during class? Shedding blood onto school property? I have to pay for the cleaning, damn it! Look, I got caught opening a letter, alright? It was an accident. I'm not looking for excuses, Tobias! I'm looking to find out if these claims are true. Now take your hands out of your pockets and show them to me. Bloody bandages. So what I'm hearing is true then? You've actually been cutting yourself. And in the middle of class, no less. Have you no shame? I'm telling you, Mr. Webb, it was an accident. Okay, that's all it is. What it is, is appalling. You're mutilating yourself in front of the other students, and this needs to come to an end. You clearly have... Certain conditions, but that doesn't excuse something like this. 
Now, I don't want to punish you for something you can't control, but I've already informed your parents about this problem. And if they don't do something about it, I will have to send you to counseling. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Mr. Webb. Good. You're excused. I can't even say that I blame him, I guess. It is pretty strange. Your principal mentioned conditions. What was he referring to? I was diagnosed with non-suicidal self-injury. And a rare condition called CIP. Congenital insensitivity to pain, right? Yes. I do have to ask though, if you're unable to feel pain, what was the goal behind the self-harm? It's hard to explain, but just seeing that I was harming myself, seeing the blood seep out of my skin, it relieved this numb feeling I had inside. It must be difficult living with these conditions. You get used to it. Anyways, when he told me that he informed my parents, I knew my mom was late because of Frank. He had a bad temper and he hated me to begin with, but even the smallest thing would set him off into a violent episode. But even then, that night was different. You mean, Frank was more violent than usual? Yeah. So what did happen after your conversation with Principal Webb? We lived in a more secluded area not too close to the main city, so it took me about an hour to walk home. I remember it was a cold, foggy night, and it was beginning to rain. On my way, I happened to look down into the ditch and saw what looked like the body of a little girl wrapped in a blood-stained white sheet. I was just standing there. I didn't know what to do. I was fixated on the girl. Hey! Stop the car! Hey! I tried getting their attention, but they just kept driving, and there was no one else in sight. And when I turned back to see the body, it was gone. Gone? It just wasn't there anymore. There was no blood, the ground where she was laying looked untouched. I told myself it was just some kids playing a prank and tried to forget it. Once I got home, it was the last thing on my mind anyways. Were there any reports of missing children around that area? A lot of children go missing around Forest Lawn, but I didn't see any that fit her description. It's like she never existed. Hmm. Interesting. Well, what happened when you finally made it home? When I walked in the door, I saw Millie. I could tell that she was upset. And I knew why. What's wrong? The same thing that's always wrong here. She looked up at me and I felt my heart sink as I saw the dried blood on her face. Remnants of a bloody nose. And her left eye was swollen shut. This happened to her because of me. Jesus, Millie. What did he do? He was still mad because you hit him this morning. Then Principal Webb called and he just lost it. He slapped Mom. When I stepped in, he did this. Millie, I I'm so sorry. I... Toby, stop. It's not your fault that he's a violent prick. Where's Mom? Up in her bedroom, ignoring everything. Again. And where is he? The garage. Frank would always go out there and work on his cars for hours when he was pissed off. Millie was praying that things would be better in the morning. I'm not the praying kind, but I had no idea how fucked up everything was going to become. Do you think a prayer would have helped? I believe that prayer is a sort of coping mechanism for some people. 
I suppose that addressing the issue head on and hoping for positivity couldn't hurt. But I don't believe it would have altered the outcome. That being said, our session is nearly done for today, but it seems to me that the bulk of your problems stemmed from Frank, correct? Exactly. We weren't the richest family, we had fights. I mean, no family is perfect, but when mom shacked up with him, it was the beginning of the end. Was Frank always the violent monster that you describe? Yeah. Yeah, he was. Obviously, he tried to mask it at first, but he was always an asshole. Tell me about the first day you met Frank. It was five years ago. We knew Mom had been dating this guy for a while, but we never met him before. I was 13 at the time. You should just give up, Millie. You know I always win. You wish. Just don't get too upset when I beat you. Hey mom, how was your date? Oh, it was wonderful, son. I'm actually gonna go back out with Frank, but I wanted to introduce you to him first. Is that alright? Sure. It's about time we get to meet him. I'll bring him right in. Mom was so excited for us to meet him. Millie and I were cautiously optimistic, but Mom had a history of dating one piece of shit after another. Kids, this is Frank. Frank, this is my daughter Millie, and my son Toby. Hi. We've heard a lot about you, Frank. Well, I've heard plenty about you kids. It's real nice meeting you finally. Hun, I just need to use the restroom, and we can head out, okay? Alright, Evelyn. Frank came over and sat on the arm of the couch. I thought he was just gonna make small talk while he waited. What you guys playing? Mario Kart. Ah, well, them racing games. It just seems a little rude to me. You know, you got company over and you're playing games instead of talking. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, we can pause it if you want. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and do that? Did you get your homework done? No, not yet. But you lied to your mama though, right? Told her it's all done. No, she she knows we haven't done it yet. We always do it before we go to bed. <laughs> Shit. See, that's what we call irresponsible. You don't play until you finish your chores. And right now your chores getting your homework done. Look. You go ahead and play your games. Just know, things are gonna change when your mom and I get married. No more fun and games. Got that? All right, Frank, I'm ready. There's the lovely lady. Doesn't she look beautiful? Frank, stop. Are we all getting along in here? Oh yeah, they're great. You've raised a couple fine children, darling. You should be proud. So he was already controlling from the moment he met you. It doesn't surprise me that he had even darker tendencies later on. So if you don't mind me asking, what happened to your real father? I think he left before I was born, but Mom never really talked about him. I don't even know his name. And it seems that your mother never sought out stability for her children after that. Broken homes often lead to broken minds. Well, I think I'd like to leave it here for today. We can pick this up again tomorrow. I must say, Tobias, I'm very proud of your progress. You've opened up to me a lot so far, and I'm grateful that you feel comfortable enough to do so. You seem like you genuinely want to help. And I do, Toby. See, I don't believe that you're evil or wicked. I think you've been dealt a terrible hand in life. 
I think you are deeply troubled, and I'm going to personally do whatever I can to heal those wounds. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> Don't mention it. Well, try and get some sleep tonight, son. We'll talk tomorrow, like I said. This is the personal audio log of Dr. Clarence T. Wilson. The night is November 20th, 9.56 p.m. I had a great breakthrough tonight with Tobias Reed Adams. Patient is 18 years of age and suffers from NSSI, CIP, severe anxiety, PTSD, and hallucinations. He speaks of being watched by some faceless entity which seems oddly familiar to me. And his mention of the girl in the ditch sounds just like what happened to a former patient of mine. Surely he wouldn't know about those incidents, but, but I'm going to try my hardest to find out what else he's seen. The boy turned himself in six months ago, but has barely spoken since then. He confessed to a heinous crime, but never divulged the full details, so he was admitted here to Pinehurst by my old friend Detective Kent. I've been tasked with evaluating him and getting some answers about what really happened. Today we had the longest conversation to date. I learned details about his controlling and abusive stepfather and the love he had for his sister Millie. I am convinced that I can truly help him if we're able to maintain this level of trust. Only time will tell, but I am incredibly hopeful. I wish other patients were this willing to cooperate, but I digress. I hope to learn more and gain greater perspective tomorrow morning. Good morning, Toby. How are you feeling today? I'm fine. Excellent. So, as you know, it's almost Thanksgiving. And in the spirit of the coming holiday, I'd like to know what you were thankful for prior to being a patient here. I don't think it matters. My whole life, everything went up in flames. It's meaningless now. That's not true, Tobias. Your life is just as valuable as anyone else's and I'm going to help you regain control of it. Besides, if you didn't have your life, I never would have had the pleasure of meeting you, and I've enjoyed our time together. If you're dwelling in the past you can't change, or the future that may never happen, you're neglecting the here and now. My goal is to help you face these demons and conquer them, so that you can simply live once again. But surely, there must have been something you were grateful for. I was thankful for Millie. And Mr. Crothers. Him and his son Danny own the little house just down the street from us. Was this the same Danny that JC mentioned after school? Yeah, he was my best friend. Him and his dad always had my back. Sometimes Mr. Crothers would notice me outside after a bad fight, and he would invite me over to hang out with Danny. They were good people, Dr. Wilson. And Mr. Crothers was more of a father to me than Frank ever was. Dude, this game is awesome! Have you played Mortal Kombat? Nah, my dad says it's too violent. He's a real hard ass about it, so I ain't allowed to play it. Hey! No swearing! And don't make me the bad guy here for fulfilling my parental duties, okay? <laughs> I'm just playing, Dad. Hey, Toby, I'm gonna grab some snacks. You want anything? Uh, what do you have? Well, we got ten sirloin steaks, we got fifteen rib roasts, twelve bags of hamburger, we got thirteen rump roasts, about forty chicken leg quarters, we got hot and cold cereal, hot and cold fruits and vegetables, green beans, tomato, potato, chicken, turkey, chili, you name it! Dad, we're not doing this again! I'll just get some pizza rolls. Well... Uh, Toby, can I talk to you for a minute? Sure, what's up? 
Now I know it ain't none of my business, but did your old man hurt you? I can't feel pain, Mr. Crothers. I... That ain't what I mean, son. I ain't talking about what you can or can't feel. I'm talking about what he did to you. <sighs> I'd rather have him beat me than take it out on Millie. I don't feel his punches, his kicks. She does. Toby, son, what he's doing is wrong. Something has to be done. What does your mama think? She doesn't. As long as she can ignore the problem and pretend that she's happily married, she doesn't think about it. Well, go to the police about it. I could even call Child Protective Services. No. If that happens, I go into foster care. Look, Millie's in driver's training right now. And as soon as I'm 18, we're both gone. But on our own terms, not ripped apart. I understand. Well, if you ever need anything, son, don't hesitate to tell Danny or me, okay? We got your back. I know, Mr. Crothers. And I appreciate that so much. I really do. Hey, how about a movie? I'm thinking Die Hard. A movie sounds great, man. I'm glad that you had the Crothers family to help you through the bad times. Speaking of bad times, you were telling me about that night. The night you had to walk home. I know that this is where things get more difficult to talk about, so I completely understand if you're not ready. But I feel we're making wonderful progress thus far. My hope is that talking about it will not only help you to face and conquer that horrible night, but also ensure the betterment of your mental health going forward. I think I am ready. I'm very glad to hear that, Toby. So, tell me. What happened that night? It started with Millie getting beaten by that goddamn animal. Millie wanted me to forget about it, but I couldn't. Like I said before, I don't feel the hits. I don't even wince at his blows. But my sister, she could feel it. And I wasn't going to let Frank get away with that. I'm going out there. No, Toby, you'll make things worse. Just leave him be. I'm not like Mom, Millie. I can't just sit back and do nothing. Toby, please. Just let him calm down. No! I'm sick of being passive for this asshole. I can't do this anymore. Look. If things go bad, promise me you'll take his car and get someplace safe. She tried to stop me, but I wouldn't listen. I just wanted to make Frank hurt for once. The way he hurt us. I got up the courage to go to the garage, and I saw him working on his Camaro. Who the fuck is that? This shit ends tonight, asshole. The fuck did you just call me? You heard what I said. And it does end tonight. You can beat me all you want, but why the fuck would you hurt Millie? I know what set you off, and she had nothing to do with it. If you ever put your hands on her again, I promise you'll regret it. You fucking idiot. You think a pussy like you can do anything to a man like me? Who the fuck do you think you are? What kind of man beats women and children? No man. And if you were half the man you pretend to be, Millie and I would not spend every second of every single day hoping that you die. Well, that's what you want, is it? Here's a nice shiny hatchet for you. 
Take your shot, prick. What are you waiting for, boy? Permission? You have my permission! Now take your fucking shot. The hatchet in his hand looked exactly like the ones in my dream. I wanted to grab it so bad. One hit to the face and all our problems would have been over. But I couldn't bring myself to do it. You motherfucker! I tackled him against the car. We wrestled back and forth, but he was stronger than me. Once he got the upper hand, he didn't stop. Piece of shit! Frank dragged me out of the garage and up to the front door. I was barely conscious. All I know is that every part of me was covered in blood. There was a loud ringing in my ears. Frank wanted to make an example. Millie was still sitting at the bottom of the stairs as he dropped my body on the floor in front of her. Oh my god, Toby. <laughs> you fucking bastard, what did you do? Your brother needs your help, girl. Take care of him. <clears throat> Toby, it's gonna be okay. Is it, bitch? <clears throat> Is it gonna be okay? <clears throat> Is this the sister you were trying to protect? Huh? Seems like you failed at that shit. I'm gonna break this bitch's neck, right? No! <laughs> Millie, run! Now! Go! I held him down long enough for Millie to grab his keys and get to the car. Once I heard the sound of her driving down the street, I started losing consciousness. I didn't have the strength to fight back, so I let him take out his frustration. My God, Toby. You could have been killed. I know. And that thought was repeating in my head, too. But the thought of my sister being far away from Frank was all that mattered to me. I probably would have died, but he ran out the door and chased after Millie in his old truck. I was too weak to follow. And that was the last time I saw my sister alive. I'm at a loss for words, Toby. It breaks my heart just picturing it. I can't imagine actually going through it. But for what it's worth, I think you were very brave to stand up to him like you did. It takes a great amount of inner strength to confront your fears, and you did exactly that. As for the stir of your courage, I want you to understand that none of it, and please believe me when I say that none of it was your fault. I, I know that now, but if I just let it go like Millie asked me to, she would still be here. You can't know that for sure. Millie was only a student driver at the time, and she wouldn't have driven off that night if it wasn't for me. That's my fault, Doctor. I am trying to come to terms with it. And I appreciate what you're saying, but I can't act like I'm not partly to blame. I owe it to Millie to take that responsibility. I do understand that, Toby. I just want you to remember, there is a vast distinction between being the very perpetrator of a terrible outcome and being one of its many factors. Honestly, given Frank's predilection for violence, I highly doubt that night would have turned out any differently. With or without your involvement. Well, I guess we'll never know, right? We can't change the past. You're right. We can't. I'd like to hear the rest of what happened before we get into the nightmares, which you say became more prevalent after that night. 
I was laying in bed in total darkness. I assumed Millie went to stay with one of her friends. I was listening to music and trying to drown out the constant loop of the night's events repeating in my head. After a while, the light turned on and I saw my mother standing in the doorway, looking at me with tears streaming down her face. I turned off the music, expecting to hear her demanding an apology to Frank. Toby, your father, Frank, is, is making a police report downstairs. A report about what? It's... It's Millie, honey. She, she got into a car accident. Jesus Christ. Is she okay? Mom? Where is she? Your sister is dead, Toby. No. 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 She can't be dead. I, I, I need to go to her. She she needs me. Son, she's gone. No! <laughs> she never should have been out there on those back roads and in this fog. I saw the Camaro swerve and she hit a guardrail, throwing her from the car. By the time I got out of my truck and down to the river, the storm was raging and I was too late. She was already being carried away by a rip current. No parent should have to see their child like that. So, after an altercation, your daughter Millie drove off in the Camaro and you followed her? Yes, Detective, that's correct. I see. Can you describe this escapade in full detail, Mr. Adams? My son's been having problems in school. And he's developed quite an attitude. I, I was upset about him getting in trouble and it just... It just got blown out of proportion. Of course, being a stepfather, I'm always in the wrong to these kids. Uh-huh. So, from what I understand, it was your son's problems, as you put it, that offset this whole predicament. I'm having trouble understanding how your daughter was involved in this. Can you elaborate on that? Her and Toby are close. She doesn't like him getting in trouble. It makes her... Well... Do shit like this. God damn it! If only she stayed home, I'd still have my little girl! Your little girl, Frank? The girl you slapped and kicked? I'm guessing you left that part out. You didn't have the guts to tell the cops what you did because you're ashamed. You fucking coward! Son. I don't... I'm not your goddamn son! Oh, Jesus, are you kidding me? You're really gonna do this right now? Just tell the fucking truth, or I'm pressing charges! Hold on. Tell us what happened. The boy's not right in the head, Detective. He's on medication, but I don't think it's helping. You've said your piece, Mr. Adams. I would like to hear his side of the story. Toby, proceed. I came home from school and saw my sister Millie sitting at the bottom of the stairs. Her face was all fucked up because of this asshole. I fought with him out in the garage. He did all this to me and hurt Millie again before she was able to get away. You lying little shit! Hey, that's enough out of you. Mrs. Adams, you've just been sitting there and you haven't said a word. Everything your son said, is it all true? I, uh, if it is, I, I wouldn't know. I was napping at that point. I had a terrible headache. From what I've garnered, there was quite a commotion here. I find it hard to believe you could sleep through that. Well, uh, 
I, I always use earplugs to help me relax. I don't hear much when I sleep. No, even with earplugs, she would have heard a scuffle like that. This whole thing's ridiculous. Mrs. Adams, I'm going to ask you a personal question, and it would be in your best interest to answer sincerely. Does your husband have a history of domestic violence? Tell them, Mom. I was giving my mother a chance to do the right thing for once. To stand by her children. And did she? In the most bullshit way she could. He gets a bit rough sometimes. But it's really not like that, officer. I swear. He just has a bit of a temper. Oh, that's great, Evelyn. You make me sound like a loose fucking cannon or something. Mr. Adams, your son wants to press charges on you and the details of your stories aren't lining up. So I have to take you in until we figure everything out. And believe me, I will get to the bottom of this. You can't do this! Toby isn't right in the head! You can't take his words seriously! Right now, he's the one with a nosebleed and your knuckles are bruised. I'm taking you in, and that's final. God damn you, boy. It's your fault she was behind the fucking wheel in the first place. It's all your fault, you son of a bitch! Mr. Adams, stand down! No! Come here, you little prick! You have the right to remain silent. Anything you do or say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Even though I was being ripped apart inside over Millie, it felt great watching them cuff Frank and take him away. I could imagine you felt quite relieved. Was he found guilty? He was, but only for a misdemeanor, they said. There was an investigation, but the evidence was inconclusive. They found Millie's DNA at the crash site, but they never found the body. She was eventually declared dead on account of imminent peril, and Frank was back out in three months. Only three months for what he did? Frank was an ex-Marine. He served for five years but was discharged for repeated possession of narcotics. He blamed the whole incident on PTSD and his lawyer got him out early on parole, under the condition that he would seek counseling. So what caused his PTSD? He never showed any signs of trauma. I always figured it was just another lie. <sighs> well, how were things during the three months when he was out of the house? Still bad at home, just in different ways. I didn't even see my mom for the first month because she locked herself in her bedroom. On the rare occasion that I did see her, I tried talking about Frank, about Millie, but every time she just got defensive and refused to speak to me. It didn't take long for her to try drowning her sorrows with booze. She was constantly drunk, and we barely said more than a word to each other on any given day. I practically lived at the Crothers' house, and they helped me so much. Mr. Crothers always had kind words and words of wisdom to help me, and I actually experienced joy hanging out with Danny which was rare for me at that point. After a couple months of this, I tried to have an actual conversation with my mother when I came home from school. Mom? I was watching that. Mom. I know that we've never had the best relationship, but I was hoping we could talk about everything. What is there to talk about? Millie, for one. Millie's dead. Christ, don't you think I know that? It's been eating me alive from the inside and I can't keep doing this! I need someone to talk to about it. I was hoping it could be you. Why should you have someone to talk to? You took my husband away from me. You took my daughter away from me. Now you want my pity? 
I didn't take anything from you. Frank did this. He did all of this. You're just too blind to see it. You bastard. I hope this all eats away at you. For fuck's sake, I'm your son! You should have put your foot down and gotten rid of him years ago! Yet you still pine away over him while one of your children is dead and the other one needs you. What kind of a fucking mother are you? I never wanted to be your mother. I had my daughter, and then I... And then you came and ruined everything. When I found out I was going to have a second child, I prayed something would go wrong. I never wanted you. And now, you're all I'm left with. <laughs> she was drunk, but that only revealed her true feelings. The things she normally had the restraint to keep locked away. We all have secrets. That was the moment I knew that whatever semblance of a family I had was dead. I collapsed on my bed and just laid there staring at the wall. I felt like I wasn't even there. Like I was watching some bad movie that I couldn't turn off. It felt like the days were just bleeding from one to the next. I didn't come out of my room for days. My nightmares or hallucinations, whatever the fuck they are, they started happening more frequently after that. Sometimes even while I was awake. While you were awake? Could you elaborate on that? The dream started to melt into real life. I was seeing and hearing things that weren't there. I was so sure they were real, but then they would just wither away. What kinds of things did you see while you were awake? One night I was standing in front of my house staring at the street lamp at the end of the driveway when I heard these heavy footsteps from the side of the house. I turned to see who or what it was when I saw this man. He was dressed all in black with short, messy black hair, and he had a painful expression frozen on his face, but he was smiling at the same time. And what did the man do? He just ran past me, but as he did, his head turned to look right at me. By the time he ran around the house, out of sight, his head was... his head was backwards. Do you know who this man was? Had you ever seen him before? Not before, but I saw him again one time after that. I was sitting in front of the garage waiting for Mr. Crothers and Danny to come home when I started hearing a creaking sound from the side of the house where the man ran in my vision. I got up and went over there, and I saw that man. His body was hanging in a noose from this thick board on the side of the house. His neck was broken. I was horrified. But then, he opened his eyes, and he spoke. Last to see. I before.
Jesus. I never saw him again after that. I'm certain that would be quite unsettling, to say the least. Did you ever tell anyone about it? No one would believe me. What would I say, that I saw a ghost? <clears throat> what else did you see? I saw a smiling dog one time. It spoke to me, blaming me for what happened. I couldn't move or respond, and then it began speaking in tongues. One time I saw this figure standing over me. It looked like it had no eyes. And there was a glowing green liquid coming from the sockets. When I rushed to turn on the light, there was no one around. And one day I was sitting in class when I was called into the principal's office. I came in and sat down asking him what he wanted, and his voice sounded almost synthetic. I'm concerned, Toby. Have you been harming yourself again? No. I've been bandaging my fingers before I even get to school. I've been careful, Principal Webb. That's a shame, Toby. What? Why did you stop? Don't you feel guilty enough to harm yourself? Mr. Webb, I... Maybe you're not going far enough. Yes, that's it. Here. Remember your favorite letter opener, Toby? It's a little doll, yes, but with enough force, you could stab it into your hand. Maybe you could shove it into your eye, like this. Mr. Webb, what are you doing? The pain is exquisite, Toby. You need to try this. Everyone should feel this way. Everyone deserves to feel this way. Yes, forget self-harm. It's time to harm everybody else. Jesus Christ! Jesus has nothing to do with this boy. This is all for you. So you can see what you need to do. The flesh is waiting, Toby. So much flesh, all for you. I was in class the whole time. I was never in that fucking office. The flesh is waiting. It sounds as though your hallucinations, ergo your subconscious thoughts, were driving you towards violence, pushing your conscious thoughts into a much darker place. I'm guessing this was the worst of your hallucinations. I think so. And the time I came home and saw my mom laying there with her wrist slit. You believed your mother attempted suicide? Yeah. I ran to the kitchen, grabbed the phone, and called 911. But when I got back, she was fine. Just sitting there watching the news. Doctor, I was losing track of reality. It is very peculiar that you should have so many delusions. But perhaps it's a result of the trauma your mind endured throughout this ordeal. It's possible that your mind was creating scenarios and moments to give a proverbial face to the feelings you had. For example, the dog placing blame on you. Tell me more about the nature of the actual nightmares. The first of them were just strange running through the woods while everything burned down around me. Always the same spot in the woods. The figure returning to stalk me and I could never run from it. Then the dreams got really bad. I started to hear the agonized screaming of a man in the distance. And this foghorn. And then I would see Millie. Not the way she used to be. The way I imagined her after the crash. I would see her mutilated, covered in cuts with half of her face torn off. That's horrible. I'm very sorry. What was her purpose in the dreams? At first I would see her... dead. I would try to help her or at least wake her up, but she didn't move. 
until one night, the dream started the same, walking through the woods. But I followed a trail of blood until I reached an old abandoned building. I don't remember how I got inside. I just found myself in an old hallway, walking slowly towards this, this black door with a red light glowing underneath it. I know you're there. I heard you whisper. Who's there? You don't remember me. Come into the light so I can see you. Even after all this time, I thought you would remember me. Let me see you! It was her. It was Millie. I could see her empty eye socket on the left side, with only exposed bone around it. She had giant cuts all over her face and arms. No. Millie. You were dead. I am dead. And it's all your fault, Hobie. <laughs> I'm sorry, Millie. I was just trying to help you. You failed. <laughs> You're the reason I'm dead, Toby. You did this to me. <gasps> she kept getting closer, backing me up until I hit the wall. These burned hands were reaching through the wall, ripping at me, trying to pull me in. I was fighting them, but Millie was right there, covered in blood and blaming me for what happened. It was just... chaos. I was hyperventilating and panicking until I finally broke free of their grasp. I made my way through the black door. No! And behind the door was a room where everything was bright red. The ceiling, the floor, the walls, even the things in the room. They were all red. On one of the walls there were some symbols and scribbled words. Something about an ancient being behind a wall. Before I could make out all the words, I was instantly transported to the woods with the blood red sky. I saw their bodies on the ground next to a pair of hatchets. Whose bodies? Millie. Mom. Frank. They were all sliced into parts, and the parts were arranged back together. The figure stood behind me as I realized I now held the hatchets. And then I startled awake. That night, I decided to go hang out with Danny. Everything was so overwhelming, I, I just had to get away for a while. Danny! Where's that new bottle of dish soap we bought? Under the sink, Dad! Ooh, found it! Thanks, son! I'll get it! Hey, bro. Is everything all right? No. They invited me in. I told them everything my mom said. Mr. Crothers was furious and wanted to have a word with her. I told him it didn't matter because she isn't my family. They are. He gave Danny and I some money for the arcade and the theater. All right, man. Movie starts in about 15 minutes. How about you show me that game you were telling me about? Dude, you're gonna love it. Damn, they got ninjas and shit? Hell yeah. Oh <laughs> shit, I'm picking this blue dude. Sub-Zero Shang Tsung. 
Wait, you devoured my soul? Dude, this is nothing. They have babalities, animalities, and even friendships. Friendships? My little pony much? You must be high as shit, motherfucker. A at least it has ninjas, like you said, right? Mm-hmm. And screw this, next time I pick the damn game. So what's the movie again? Only the greatest thing to ever hit the big screen. Quadruple extremism. An instant classic. Another instant classic? What's this one about? It stars Matt Damon who plays a cross-dressing stewardess who gets abducted by the Japanese Mafia, and he has to battle through the underground trenches of Bolivia to get back home to his androgynous female friend. Huh. T sounds riveting. Not really my kind of movie, though. You ain't got no class, man. I have taken control of this international media center. What you are seeing now is being broadcast throughout the world. I need those codes. Oh, shit, my head. Security! You okay, you dude? Need security. It, yeah, yeah. You're gone. I'm fine. It's internal investigation This client of yours is gonna need more than a lawyer to clean up this shit. Oh, I got a lot of shit on you. We respect the Japanese of this country. We're honest businessmen. <laughs> Damn it, not now. I'm going to eliminate hundreds of millions of humans. Hey, man. I'm not feeling too good. I'll be right back. Ah, oh, come on, man. We just got to the good part. Hurry up. You say that like there is a good part. But this insult to my client. I can fucking investigate anybody I fucking want to. Come on, I don't give a fuck what you think. No, no, not now. Get out of my fucking head! Leave me alone! Jesus! Oh, sorry, bro. Don't worry about it. Hey, I'm really sorry, man. I didn't mean to bail out like that. I, just, I don't know what's wrong with me lately. Don't worry about it, bro. You've been through a lot of shit lately. I'd be more surprised if you were completely fine. <sighs> Maybe. I still feel bad. We didn't even finish the movie. It's kind of a waste of money. Don't even trip, man. It's cool, really. I just wish there was more I could do. Hey, you've done more than enough. You and your dad have really stepped up for me, and I, I can't thank you guys enough. No thanks required, my brother. Despite my freak out at the theater, it seemed like things were really going to get better now. I had a new father and brother in the Crowthers family. I'm guessing things did not improve, though. No. Alright, see you tomorrow, man. You too, bro. Tell your dad I appreciate everything. Will do. I went inside, up the stairs, and straight to bed. I remember actually sleeping for once. No nightmares.
Mr. Crothers, is everything all right? I, well, I hope so. Did Danny stay the night at your house? No. We got back around 9.30 last night. I came inside and I I thought he went back home. You haven't seen him? Mm Mm-mm, he never showed up. I thought he was just over here, so I didn't go looking for him. You mean, he wasn't with you when you came home? The last time I saw him was at the end of the driveway. You don't think something happened, do you? He's probably just out with one of his other friends. Are you sure? I can stay home from school to help you look for him. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sure he'll turn up. I hope so. Look, if he's not back by the time I come home, I'll help you look for him, I promise. Thank you, Toby. I guess Mom heard us talking. While I was at school, she paid him a visit. She told him that if Danny was out with me, he's not coming back. That I caused Millie's death and Frank's incarceration. That I hurt everyone around me. Surely he didn't believe that rhetoric. Not at first. But as time went on, and there was no sign of his son, it wasn't hard for him to be swayed by what she said. I was the last person seen with his son, a son who was now officially missing. To make matters worse, when I got home that night, I stepped in the front door, and there on the couch was Frank. I felt a panic attack coming on. This was when he was released on parole, correct? Yeah. Hey son, it's good to see you again. I was frozen just staring at him. The audacity of this son of a bitch to speak to me after everything that happened. Look, I heard about your friend. I'm sorry. Danny's a good kid. You don't have a right to speak his name. I know you have anger towards me. Especially after what happened to your sister. But I want to make it right. I want to talk about everything. I have nothing to say to you. Toby, wait! A million thoughts were racing through my head. Voices were whispering horrible things to me. What sort of horrible things? They wanted me to do. What I was afraid to do the night Millie died. I was battling to silence the commotion in my head when my mother came to the door. Toby, would you please come downstairs? Your father and I would like a word with you. Son? We'll be in the living room when you're ready to talk. Like a moth to a flame, Mom was right back in Frank's clutches and pretending things were fine. How did you approach the situation? I was ready to end Frank if I had to. I decided to see what they wanted. And if things got violent, regardless of what happened to me, Frank would draw his last breath. Son. I said terrible things to you, and I said terrible things about you to Mr. Crothers. What did you say to him? It doesn't matter. It matters to me. It doesn't matter because I'm going to fix it. Frank made me see the error of my ways. I was a drunken fool, and I should never have uttered those words. I'm going to go over and explain myself to Mr. No. I'll talk to him. He's my friend. My family. I'll clean up your mess for you. Son. Don't you dare call me your goddamn son! Fine. Toby. I understand that you're angry. And you have every right to be. I was cruel and wicked. I was- Not was. You are. Are you seriously trying to convince me you've changed? Either one of you? I had a drinking problem, son. I'm trying to make things right. I know it may be hard to believe, but- I don't have time for this shit. 
I have to do damage control on a man who is searching for his missing son. So thanks for that, Evelyn. Toby? Just give him time, Evie. I went to see Mr. Crothers. And I did my best to control the situation. I explained that my mother was drunk and reiterated the fact that I had no idea what happened with Danny. Did that help? Barely. We went out looking for Danny, but it got too dark and we agreed to go to the police together the next day. And what did the police investigation reveal? Well, there was a search party out in the woods near the house. We searched for like two months with no trace of him. As time went on, suspicions grew. And it all culminated one night when I had a dream. I saw Danny. He was trapped in one of the abandoned shafts in the mine on Hills Grove. He fell onto a pile of debris. And his body was contorted around the wreckage. Danny! Danny! He was dead. His eyes were white, soulless. I saw the figure standing over him watching me. Even without eyes, it's always watching. Oh, Danny, I'm here, son. I don't know, I just found him like this. Not my son. Not my baby. Could you do this to him? No, no, no. I, I didn't do anything, Mr. Crothers, I swear. I just found him here. Why would you let this happen? <laughs> I, I didn't do this. Uh, Why would you let this happen? Mr. Crothers finally looked up at me. His eyes full of flames. I knew you murdered Danny. I, I didn't kill him. <laughs> you, you have to believe me. You did this again. I startled awake and immediately wanted to call the police, but then I realized if my dream was true, I would be the prime suspect. How would anyone else know where he was? And if my dream wasn't true, it would seem like a sick prank or something. I remember it was exactly 3.33 in the morning, and I walked all the way to the Double Down Diner on the outskirts of Forest Lawn. And I used the payphone to call in an anonymous tip. Nine one one, what's your emergency? There's been a local search for a missing boy, Daniel Crothers. I have reason to believe that he may be in danger at the mine on Hills Grove. I hung up before the guy could respond. On the walk home, I remember a battle raging in my head. Did I do the right thing? Should I have told them who I am and how I know? Did I really dream about Danny's corpse? Or was I remembering that I put him there? What if I did it? Was Danny actually found in that mine? Exactly how I saw him in my dream. I'm so sorry for the loss of your friend. What was the deduction after the investigation? You mean the cause of death? Yes. Well, apparently instead of going home, he ended up walking to the mine on Hills Grove. And he fell through a weak section of the ground, breaking his leg and getting trapped under the debris. Well, you see, how could you have done that? It was a freak accident, Toby. What happened to your friend is very unfortunate, but you had nothing to do with it. Good luck convincing anyone of that. After he was found, rumors started spreading about me being the cause of his death. That I either directly killed him, or did something that got him killed. 
I couldn't... Excuse me, Toby. This is my emergency line. I have to take this. Hello? Oh my god. I I'll be there immediately. Toby, there's something going on. Uh, we'll have to continue our discussion tomorrow. There's been an incident with another patient. Sean, would you escort my patient back to his cell? Yes, sir. Should I have Nurse Crawford give him a sedative? No, that won't be necessary. Understood, sir. Let's go, Toby. No, 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 not this time. Not again. Everyone you get close to will share the same fate. No, I won't let anyone else that I care about suffer because of me. You can't stop it, Toby. You're too weak to stop it. Shut up. I apologize for the abrupt ending to our previous session. I understand, Doctor. I hope everything's okay. Uh, some of the patients can be unruly, to say the least. But I digress. I believe you were in the process of explaining these rumors that were going around. Dr. Wilson? Yes? You've been a friend to me. You've been trying to help me, and it means more than you know. But you shouldn't. What do you mean, I shouldn't? Bad things happen to the people I care about. Anyone, everyone who gives a damn about me ends up hurt or worse. Toby, breathe. That's your guilt speaking. Nothing's going to happen to me. I intend to be the catalyst for the progress you're making. To show you that these tragic events are finished. You don't need to fear those things anymore. Maybe you're right. I think I just had an anxiety attack from my nightmare last night. You had another one? What was it about? I can't remember. I, I, I just startled awake and felt afraid. Well, I assure you, son. There's nothing to be afraid of. With the progress we've made, I truly believe you're on your way to accomplishing inner peace. But... You have to crawl before you walk, and walk before you can run. It will take time. No. You were telling me about these rumors. <sighs> yeah. Once the news broke that Danny was dead, everything just spiraled out of control. Mr. Crothers was informed after they found the body. When they told him about the anonymous tip, it didn't take long for him to put two and two together. My plan backfired and made me look even more suspicious. He mentioned my name and other members of the search party told their friends and family. Soon enough, it was going all around the school, and I was constantly on edge. Some kids spray-painted the words killer and murderer on my locker. And JC, of course, had to get involved. I knew you were a fatherless mistake. <laughs> but damn, killing someone, huh? A friend no less? That's low. Even for trash like you. Get out of my face, Jason. Guess I dodged a bullet there, huh? I said back off! Cause that's how it goes, right? Everyone you're close to shares the same fate. I remembered when Millie would say that in my dreams. And I started to lose focus. First you lost your sister. And now your best friend. How does it feel knowing you got them? Both killed. I just completely snapped on him. <clears throat> oh, fuck! Oh, my fucking nose! Oh, you fucking piece of shit! <clears throat> I remember feeling like I was outside of my own body, watching the whole thing. I almost killed him. A part of me wanted to stop, but... Another part of me enjoyed it. After all, 
he of all people would actually deserve death. Everything came into focus when some students pulled me off him. That's when I saw what I did to him. His face was unrecognizable. I ran out of there as quickly as I could. I went straight outside and kept running to the end of the school property near the woods. My brain was pure chaos. I, I couldn't concentrate or maintain a single thought. But I remember seeing a cat laying there. It was butchered. It looked like someone killed it. I stared at it for so long, in some kind of catatonic state, which was broken up by a fist to the face. <clears throat> huh? JC and his group of friends caught up to me, and they retaliated. Kick his fucking ass! <clears throat> Danny may have been a pussy, <clears throat> but I'm not. You hit me. Hey, come here! You hit me! And I hit back! You son of a bitch! It felt like the attack went on forever. I just kept thinking to myself, when will this fucking end? I got my answer when I saw Frank. I knew I was hallucinating. He must have been one of the other kids, but he came up to me and delivered one final punch. I was knocked unconscious. When I did finally wake up, it was getting dark outside. I heard a low rumbling sound that I couldn't identify through the ringing in my head. I looked around and saw that I was laying on the train tracks behind the school. JC's friends dragged me out there. After a few moments, I could tell that the rumbling I was hearing was an approaching train. Internally, I was screaming at my limbs to move, to get me off the tracks before I was crushed. But externally, I could barely even move my eyelids. The train was coming closer and closer, and its light became brighter and brighter. I convinced myself that this was it. This is how my life finally ends. I closed my eyes and waited. I thought I was dead. When I was finally able to force my eyes open, I saw that I was in the woods. The same place I'd been seeing in my dreams. Everything was red, and that's when I noticed that I was wearing some kind of mask. A mask? Where did it come from? I don't know, and I didn't care. It felt like it was a part of me. I was able to move again. So I struggled to stand, but immediately collapsed to my knees. <laughs> Christ, this hurts. Wait, I can, I can feel that. How? That's when I heard him in my head. Him meaning the figure. What are you? What do you want from me? Fuck! What truth? I looked around and there he was, standing near me. I thought, no, I knew I was dreaming. But I never woke up. What happened when you noticed the figure? What was he doing? Just standing there. He doesn't move like you and I, Dr. Wilson. He's not a physical being. He kind of phases into our reality. If he does move, it's like he's glitching out or something. You never see the movement. Our reality. So you're saying that he was actually there, not just in a vision. 
I don't know, Doctor. I, this seemed more real than any vision I had before. And I had no idea where I was, but the figure was guiding me. And where did he lead you, Toby? Home. Every time I stumbled and fell to the ground, I would see the figure in front of me, pushing me to keep going. I struggled for what felt like an eternity, until finally stepping out of the tree line, I saw my backyard. Once I got closer, I saw the figure again. He was pointing to the cellar doors. I don't understand. What's in the cellar? I happened to catch my reflection in the mirror of an old vanity table my mother left down there. The mask I was wearing looked like it was made of bone, and it concealed the damage done by JC and his friends. I was almost in a trance, just staring into the one eye of the mask, and the figure drew my attention once again. What are you trying to show me? What was he saying to you? He was pointing at the dirt floor of the cellar. He told me to dig. Dig, Toby. I dropped to my knees and started tearing through the dirt with my bare hands, almost against my own will. But you were aware of your actions. Yes. Digging through the dirt pulled the bandages off my fingers, leaving the raw wounds exposed. I was in so much pain, but I couldn't make myself stop. The first time in my life that I could actually feel pain, and I already wanted it gone. What was the purpose of the digging? He wanted me to see the truth. Which was? <laughs> What was buried in that cellar, son? Millie. I was in shock, but I collected myself enough to pull her out of the ground. She was horribly decayed. And this wasn't in my head, Dr. Wilson. I don't know how I was able to feel. Maybe he was somehow allowing me to. But I could feel her corpse in my arms. I don't understand. The evidence says your sister died in the river. No. I went into some kind of entranced state, and I was shown what happened to her. There was a deer in the middle of the road. Because of the fog, Millie didn't see it right away. She swerved to avoid hitting it. The Camaro hydroplaned, and she crashed into a nearby tree. Frank caught up to her, and... He saw that she was still alive. He was so enraged. You fucking bitch! You destroyed my goddamn car! Come here! Hey! Come here! Stop! Let me Hold go. still! Get the fuck off Shut me. up! Get off! Toby! That's it! Toby. Shut up! You, you kids fucking ruin everything! You ruined my marriage! You ruined my car! You ruined my life! You're done! You hear me? Done! No more! Shit, shit, shit. God damn it. Thank, 
Thank Frank. Okay, okay. Downstairs now. Frank, you're covered in mud. What happened? No questions. Let's go. Oh, oh God. Millie? Honey? Don't touch her. She ain't alive no more. Millie! <laughs> She's dead. Dead? Because of me, Evelyn? We can't let the cops see her. What? What are you talking about? We have to call an ambulance! No! I ain't going to jail for this, Evie! Now we gotta get our story straight. I followed her. I saw my Camaro crash into the damn tree. I saw her thrown into the river. And that's all we know. I don't... I can't! Look! This ain't a game. This whole thing was a... Th fucked up accident. But, but if the cops find her here, if they see what I did to her... I'm fucking done for, Evie. And we can't let that happen. Uh, we need to make her disappear. Just for a while. What... What are you asking me to do? I gotta get cleaned up before I call the police. I, I need you to bury her. No, Frank. No. God damn it! Either bury her, or I'll do it myself. Only this time, there's gonna be two bodies. Understand? Uh, fine. Where do I... Where do I put her? Uh, uh, uh. The cellar. We'll put her in the cellar. <laughs> no. This, this can't be true. I will never watch you. Why did you show me this? you I don't believe you <laughs> You... You weren't supposed to see this. Son, I... We did something monstrous. Your father and I... I don't know if there was another option or not. I, I didn't... I didn't want this. Where did you get that mask? I'll, I'll make it right, Toby. I'll tell the authorities. Right now! <laughs> Toby, please! Please stop! Oh, God. Frank! Frank! Please, son. I'm your mother. I made a terrible mistake. 
but I'll make it right. I promise you, son, please. Do you have any sympathy? Not for you. Jesus Christ! What the fuck? Uh, you fucking freak, what have you done? As long as you're breathing, not enough! Did you think you could keep it from me forever? Oh, my fucking leg! Oh. Both of them. <laughs> Fuck! You feel it, don't you? The fear! You know this is the end! You're gonna have to kill me. Or I'll fuck you up worse than I did Millie. Okay. <laughs> How did you feel once Frank was dead? It felt great. Like I should have done it long ago. But the death of your stepfather, it did not bring back your sister. It didn't. But it removed him. And your mother? I hated her. Almost more than Frank. She was the weak fucking coward that enabled him. I see. So, <clears throat> what happened after everything? I just wanted it all gone. The house, the bodies, all of it. I dragged both of them into the basement. There was a can of gas in the garage, and I used it to set the house on fire. I am a bit confused by one thing. What? Why did you turn yourself in? You clearly felt better after taking their lives. So why surrender yourself? Mr. Crothers. What about him? He gave me a moment of clarity. Toby, I saw the fire. What's going on around here? I had no words to say to him. The man who thought I killed his son was looking at me, wearing a mask, covered in blood and burning my house down. I wanted to tell him everything, but the words wouldn't come. Is that blood on you? Are your parents in there? What have you done? Mr. Crothers. You murdered them. Mr. Crothers, I, I can- You goddamn murderer! I knew you murdered Danny! Now you murdered your family! How could I ever have trusted you? I never hurt Danny. He was my brother. You are my family. Mr. Crothers, please. Don't touch me. Get your hands off me. I said don't touch me. Don't touch. Uh, oh. Mr. Crothers. Oh. Oh. Mr. Crothers. Oh. Please. Please go back. 
<laughs> Mr. Crothers, please come back. <laughs> And just like that, I lost everything. The man I considered my father had a heart attack and died in my arms, thinking that I killed his son. And that's what made me turn myself in. As I held his lifeless body, it dawned on me. Even if I didn't kill Danny, I did commit murder. I didn't want to be walking free and end up doing it again. While murder is absolutely inexcusable, I don't think anyone would argue that you're an evil person. Right or wrong aside, your actions were the result of the trauma you endured, nothing more. I am very happy that you decided to seek help though, and that you realized what you did was wrong. Even though I'm a lost cause, right? You're not a lost cause. I believe your mind has been shattered beneath the weight of everything you've been through. However, I am certain that I can help you put those pieces back together. Now that I've heard the full story directly from you, I believe I can establish a game plan moving forward to begin treating the broken pieces and make them whole again. You mean it, Doctor? You really think I could be normal again? Yes, Toby, I believe... My god, is that blood? Stay back, Toby. What the hell? Jesus! Sean! <laughs> Jeffrey Mason. You killed Sean. Insane, you son of a bitch! <laughs> Get off me! <sighs> a knife in your leg, and you don't even flinch. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? Let go of me! Shut up! Hold down the other one! I got him! Oh, fuck! I think they killed the doctor! He did this! I said shut up! Christ! He fucking bit him! He's getting away. <laughs> you better go get him. Uh, have fun on the outside. Uh, I'll see you again soon. <laughs> <laughs> What do I do? What do I do? Child, join me. You. I haven't seen you since that night. I didn't even know if you were real. You left me with nothing. You're right. 
My father left me. My mother lied to me. My friends abandoned me. But you showed me the truth. You wanted to help me. Crawford. What happened here? There was a breakout involving two patients. One of them stole a knife that was used to stab a guard, as well as Dr. Wilson. He then bit the jugular of another guard while the second patient escaped the facility. Oh my god. Is uh, the doctor all right? He needs an ambulance, but I think he'll pull through. Thank goodness. What about the guards? They didn't make it. Look, the ambulance should be here soon, but here's my number if you need to reach me. Now, is everything under control here? Yeah. Tobias Adams escaped, but I sedated that deviant Mason and got him back in his cell. Mason? As in Jeffrey Mason? The one and only. That little fucker. I'll put out an APB for Adams. He couldn't have gone very far. And I want to see Jeffrey Mason. you were the one who caused all this. Oh, what? You have a twisted sense of humor. Well, so does God. But people still pray to him, don't they? Given this little incident you fabricated, <laughs> I've decided Pinehurst Hospital isn't fit to detain you. I will be arranging you a one-way ticket to solitary confinement. <laughs> I hope you'll enjoy your stay in total seclusion. <laughs> It doesn't matter where they put me, or who they throw at me. I know how this all ends. I've seen it. <laughs> Would you like to know how you die? Spare me the crazed drivel. You'll be sent away first thing tomorrow. Have a nice night, Jeffrey. Leaving it a mystery, then. <laughs> it's more fun that way. Ha 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 